Hello and welcome, my friends. It's Gina from Gina K Designs, and I am so happy to see all of you here this evening. Welcome to another episode of Stampin' Chat. I'm here with Tom. Tom is way over on the other side of the room. Hey, Tom. Hola, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. You have a good day? I had a great Monday, yeah. diving into Monday, dealing Head with it. Head first into Monday. Trying to be a cool fool in this heat. <laughs> yeah, it's hot here in Wisconsin, boy. 94 degrees, I think, today. That's kind of hot. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, when you think of the winters, though, in Wisconsin, it kind of balances out. So. That's right. Somebody needs to adjust my attitude because I guarantee you that in... Uh, Three months from now, you're going to hear me complaining about the cold, wishing it was hot. So I guess we're all kind of the same, right? <laughs> well, it's great to see all of you. I see people coming in from all over YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We'd like to welcome all of our YouTube friends here. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. That really helps our channel. Also, if you'd like to subscribe, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and then you'll be notified whenever a video goes up. Also, if you're watching over on Facebook, we wouldn't mind you giving us a thumbs up over there or some hearts. I know you can click some hearts. Same with Twitch. You can do that over on Twitch. So we love the hearts and we love, we see them because we've got monitors all over so we can see what you're doing out there. We can see all your comments coming in. So it's great to see you. Well, tonight we are going to be playing with the brand new large wreath builder and we're going to be playing with a stamp set that some people can find a little bit intimidating. Now I know a lot of you had the part one of this stamp set. This is the, uh, <laughs> Which way do you want to do I don't it? know. I'll do it this way. I'll do the overhead. Oh boy, it's going to be one of those Mondays. So this is the brand new Mandala Maker 2. So this is the one that I'm going to use tonight. This is what comes in the Eclectic Fun Card Kit. And uh, if you're new to Gina K Designs, uh, well, welcome, first of all. But what I'm using here is this kit. This is called the Eclectic eclectic fun. I named it that because I felt like nothing really went together in this kit. It's very eclectic, meaning lots of different styles and different things going on here. However, we are managing to bring them all together and make some pretty cool cards. If you go back a couple lives, you'll see during our release party how I made a wreath and I used our incentive set for it, but then I also added some cute little animals in the center of it. So it's definitely, I mean, you can definitely use all of these together and you can build wreaths with a lot of the different elements in all three of these stamp sets. So this is a great kit. And let me tell you, this is over $125 value. It's got two big die sets, eight sheets of cardstock, two six by eight stamp sets, a four by six stamp set, and the bonus gift of the brand new large wreath builder. It's $125 value for $59.95. We are getting very limited on these though. And I just wanted to let you guys know that if you're on the fence, I, the last one lasted longer. I don't think this one's going to last. So I just want you to know that it's out there. All right. So we are going to use this big new wreath mandala maker. And this one seems to intimidate people because people can think in terms of floral wreaths, but they have a little bit of trouble kind of figuring out what elements to use in the mandala maker. And because there are about a million different choices, that sometimes makes it even a little more difficult. But I promise you, it's just as easy as making a regular wreath. And we're going to make one tonight. And what I love about this new mandala maker is you certainly can stamp it in color because if you take a look at these lines here, they're fairly bold lines. So if you use uh, colored ink, you're going to have a great looking image. But because they're open, you can also color them in. And I love that because... I, I, you know, we do a lot of solid stamping with, with wreaths, but coloring is really fun on these. So I'm going to actually color mine tonight. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but hang in there with me because I think there's a lot of useful information in tonight's video. I've got lots of little tips and tricks that I'm going to be mentioning throughout. So if you haven't seen the new wreath builder, it looks a little weird, very different from the original wreath builder, the mini wreath builder and the mega wreath builder. 
this one we designed, I designed for this one to be able to work in your regular size MISTI, so a smaller stamping platform but still make bigger wreaths. And I know we have a lot of friends over in Europe and Australia that like making five by seven cards, and that's becoming more popular here in the United States as well. So I wanted to make sure that you could make wreaths that would fit a five by seven card or a six by six card, the bigger ones. Uh, the new wreath builder will be sold separately after the kit retires uh, during our next release. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, somebody said, well, all I really want is the mandala maker and the wreath builder. And we did a little bit of math and it turned out that it was only $14 more to get two more stamp sets, all the cardstock and two complete die sets. Plus, if they only ordered these two things, they would have had to pay $6.95 shipping. And of course, it ships free. So it really ends up being a great deal. So if you're on the fence and you have friends that like to stamp, you can get the kit and then you have a couple gifts. Maybe you could give them a stamp and die set for Christmas or something from the kit if it's one that you're not sold on. All right. So now I'm going to use the middle size uh, template. So we have a big template here that's five and three quarters of an inch that makes a five and three quarter of an inch card then we have this one that is four and three quarters no then we have this one that is five and a quarter and then this one which is four and three quarters so i'm going to take these two templates out and we're going to use just that middle template but you can use any template you want any of them don't you know don't do what i do just because i'm doing it do what you want to do uh, I'm just showing you this one because I wanted to also show you that you don't need to stack them all up and tape them all together to use any one of the single templates. All you have to do is take the piece that you want. Let me put my glasses on because I can't see. <laughs> uh, Allison, the A Little Hello Bundle is not gone. In fact, I just talked to our stencil company and our stamp company. A Little Hello is uh, being manufactured right now, so we're hoping to have that sooner than later. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I just have some plain washi tape and I'm going to tape down this template in three spots so it doesn't move around. Okay, so I'm just picking a few spots here and of course you can reuse the washi tape. All right, so there, that's just going to hold it into place and you will notice that normally I use this side um, when I'm stamping of my Misty because this is washable. And it also has a grid on it, which is helpful. But when I'm using the wreath builder, I just roll up some purple tape or any kind of like painter's tape, anything like that. I make it into like a little kind of circle and I lay it down there because I want my mat to stay still. And I use the black side of my mouse pad. Now, if you don't have that misty mouse pad, don't worry about it. Your mat's already black and you're good to go. Um, and I only do that because I want to be able to see where my cardstock is and I want to be able to see the wreath builder. And when you put it on the white mouse pad, it kind of blends in because it's close to the same color. So this just gives you that stark difference. Now, normally with wreath building, the whole template fits in here and this is right side up. So I have a piece of cardstock. So it would look like this, but all the way in the, um, the template or inside the misty. So I just turn my misty on an angle just so this is like the top. You know what I'm saying? That's the top right there. And that's going to allow me to line things up pretty well. Now I'm going to make a square. Oh, the wreath builder will fit into other stamp platforms. So if you're in the UK and you have the Tim Holtz one or you have one from another company, um, yes, it should fit. It just doesn't fit the really tiny ones like the mini Misty and things like that. So, um, but you guys, if you if you have a mini Misty, I think you're missing out without getting the original Misty. It's it's such a good platform, you know, if or at least something this size if you if it's not available where you are and you're over in the UK or something. I think it's available there too, though. Okay, I'm going to put just one more little piece of tape right here just because I really want to have it down and I don't want to, I don't want to mess this up. So you can never use enough tape, right? Okay, so what I did was I cut a piece of cardstock to measure four 
and I'm sorry, five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. So this is a square piece of cardstock. You can do this on longer cardstock. And I promise you in my next wreath building video, I will do that for you. I will do it in a longer, you know, a longer piece of cardstock so that you guys can see how it looks on your longer cards. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I think the original Misty is hard to find right now just because materials are very limited. That's why we have trouble getting things quickly. So just hang in there because it's coming. Also, I know Hero Arts released uh, a black version of the Misty. So you can always check over at Hero Arts as well. Um, Simon says Stamp probably has them. Most of your local stamp stores probably have a few. So just check around. Now I'm putting this right into the two corners here and I'm just going to put the magnet down. Now for mandala making, so a lot of these images have a point that goes up or a point that goes down. So you can pick and choose how you want this to work. It can go up, it can go down, they can all go up, they can all go down, however you like it to look. But I like a nice mix of images that face downward and also face upward. So I'm gonna start with this image right here. It looks like a big teardrop with some lines in it. Okay, and I am going to put that right about here. Now I want to make sure that I have a little bit of room in the center and I'm lining it up. Let me just grab a colored pencil here. I have a colored pencil here. I'm lining it up with this point. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you wanna to try to get it a little bit centered. If you're completely crazy about getting it perfect, then what you can do is you can um, just take a, pencil and a ruler and just draw a line down the center just to get it perfect, but you really don't have to do that. So I don't want you to freak out about it. See, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Looks pretty close to the center. Now, the other image that I want to use is this one right here, this one, and I just want to make sure that I have room for it. And I do have room for it. Now, I could actually stamp these together if I want, and that'll save me a little bit of time. So I think I'll do that. So I'm going to put both images down at the same time, those two. And I think that makes a very, very pretty look. So I'm going to pick that up with the door of the Misty. And then now I no longer have to have my Misty in this weird position on my table. I can turn the misty back to regular misty position <laughs> and I can stamp this way because now my center point is done. I don't have to worry about it being centered in the center of my square card anymore. So I'm going to start with some black ink and I really enjoy using ink cubes when I work with the misty and the wreath builder because the images are a little bit smaller. However, you can use a full size ink pad. All right, so I'm going to stamp this. Now, this is this is a little trick of doing two of these at the same time, and we'll see how we like it. All right. That looks pretty good. Now, I probably would like to see them a little bit closer, but it's okay that they're not closer because I can put something in between there. So I might do that on this one. So now I'm going to move this from this position. I'm always looking at this top corner and I'm gonna move it down to this corner and make sure that it's snug in both corners. And I like to use my magnet just to hold it down. Once you get really good at it, you might decide you don't wanna use the magnet, but I've been bitten before, <laughs> right in the butt by not using the magnet. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to look at this corner and I'm gonna move it down to this corner. And I'm gonna make sure that again, it's inside the template in both corners. All right. Now, this may seem like it takes a little while and you might think, well, what if I wanna make lots of the same card? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that after I stamp this. So let me make the first wreath and then I will show you how to do that. Okay, so now again, I'm going back to the top and I'm gonna move down to this position. And we're just gonna keep going around. Now this is a, 
actually a very, very therapeutic kind of stamping for me. I really enjoy it. This is the kind of stamping I like to do when I've got something really good on Netflix or I'm listening to a good podcast or, you know, even sometimes if I'm watching something on TV because I don't have to be super creative and, you know, try to figure out what kind of card to make. I know what kind of card I'm making. I'm making a wreath. I just have to load images in and just stamp around eight times. So it gives my mind a little bit of a break. And it's also really good if you don't have any mojo. You don't know what to do. Like, gosh, you want to do something, but you just can't figure out what to do. Make some wreaths because you don't have to put greetings on them. You can just make the wreaths themselves. You can color them or you can stamp them in color. And then they're ready to go when you're ready and you need a card quickly. You could just rummage through the wreaths that you've made, pick one, add your greeting, and it's ready to go. And it, it, they make just such beautiful cards. And again, they're not masculine or feminine. They're, they can go to anybody. I also think these kinds of cards, especially this new mandala maker, makes an amazing card that also doubles a gift. And what I mean by that, I'm just going to grab my tidy towel here. What I mean by that is you could make a card like this and then give somebody the card along with a few colored pencils and they can color it themselves. So it's a card that's also a gift. All right. So I'm going to take this out now, these images off, because I have my complete starting point of my mandala. Okay, so now I want to be creative and I want to fill in in between. So like I said, I like some going down and some going up. So what I'm going to use is this image right here. I really like this one because it feels like it's going to fill in a little bit more. So let's use this one. And I, I can always test it and see how it will look. You see, I can lay it there and go, oh yeah, that looks good in between there. So I'm going to place this one right in between, but I'm not going to put it there because it's too close to that. I'm going to start it right over here. Okay, so I'm going to put it in between there. I can even move it down just a little bit to make sure that it's not touching those leaves. Okay, and now I'm going to pick that up with the Door of the Misty. You can see my... Uh, my cardstock is in my template, so I know it's going to stamp in the right position. Now, when you when you reload a stamp like that, always just pick it up and make sure that your cardstock is back in the template. Because when you pull that stamp up, sometimes it pulls the paper with it. And you don't want that first one to be stamped wrong. Okay, so I'm stamping this one now right into that open space like that. And then I'm turning the cardstock. And I'm going to do it again. So the really cool thing about the wreath builder that I love is the fact that sometimes you stamp something and say, oh my gosh, it's not perfectly centered or it's not perfectly even. But the thing about the wreath builder is it makes even imperfect things perfectly imperfect. And what I mean by that is every single one of them will be off by just that much. And once, you, once it goes all the way around, you don't notice it because they're all exactly the same. So it feels like it was supposed to be that way. So don't give up if one image is a little crooked or a little off. See, I feel like this one is not exactly centered, but as I go around, it's starting to look more and more perfect, right? Even if it's not perfect. Okay. And welcome everyone. It's great to see you all coming in tonight. Love to see everybody here from Facebook, from YouTube, from Twitch. It's great to see you. So Tom, how's it going? Any questions that I need to answer as uh, I'm going around? That's five and a half cardstock. Uh, this piece of cardstock is five and a quarter by five, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. And on the package of the wreath builder, the new wreath builder, it tells you the three sizes that you can cut your cardstock to. So as long as it's one side of the cardstock matches the template, you're fine. And I'm going to show you what I mean in the next video, because that's a whole video by itself. 
but I think it's important to learn it because I, I mean, this tool, it's just the fun never ends with this tool. Isn't this pretty? It's coming out pretty nice here. Okay, so now I'm going to put a dot in there. I'm actually going to put two dots. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure this is down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these open circles that has a little bit of openness about it. This one right here. And I'm going to put it down here like this. This is Rena's set, isn't it? This is Rena's set. Yeah. Rena is in school tonight, but she said she was going to try to pop in. I hope she can, but I also know she's in school and she might not be able to. She might get in trouble. Okay, and then I'm going to use this real tiny dot here. And I just want to add a dot right at the point of this one. And if you feel like you can't see it straight, you don't have to like get your neck twisted. Just turn your misty to make sure it looks the way you want it to look. So I'm going to just, am I still in the scene? Yeah, I am. Okay, excuse my head if it gets in the way. I'm just going to move that to be more even with the point. You know, clear stamps, you get them exactly where you want them, and then you touch it, and it gets stuck to your fingernail polish. I, I wasn't wearing polish earlier. I should have probably left it off because <laughs> it's sticking to my fingernail polish on the edges. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then this one looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to pick that up with the door, those two. And now, once again, I want to make sure that that's all tucked into the right spot. So I have two dots. Wait till you see how much these tiny little dots make a difference. It's so fun. Here we go. Isn't that fun? Zoom in just a little bit here so you can see this happening a little closer. There we go. All right. So I'm going to turn it. I'm going to do the same thing again. Just those two little dots. It adds so much. And that's what's really fun. Like, you could just put a dot somewhere. And even if the dot, like, you're like, oh, I don't know. Just go all the way around. Don't give up until you've gone all the way around. Because things change when they're all in place. Like, what you might think might not look great, all of a sudden starts to really look great. Now, I'm going to do another Mandala Maker card on another video as well, but I want to show you how to make it look like a snowflake because this set has elements in it. Rena designed elements into this set that you can build to look like a snowflake. And wouldn't a big square snowflake card at Christmas look amazing? And I know you might be thinking, yeah, but I don't want to go all the way around like that. 15 million times trying to, you know, mass produce cards. You don't have to, because I'm going to show you that next. Okay. I'm going to show you the, the trick on how to do this in just eight turns, the whole mandala. All right. We're getting there. Sue wants to know if there's a slim line wreath builder template in the works. There is not currently a slimline wreath builder template. Um, not currently, but it's not a bad idea. So you mean, uh, Sue, do you mean like a big slimline, like the real tall slimline or a mini slimline? Because you can actually use any size cardstock in the wreath builder. So that should definitely be another video where I show you how to use cardstocks that's the size of a slimline card to make a wreath. You can use anything in the wreath builder. Doesn't even have to necessarily fit the wreath builder. So, and I'm going to show you that in another video for sure. Okay. So I kind of like where this is and I feel like I should stop there because that is just a beautiful wreath. So that with a nice bold greeting in the center, and I'm going to use our incentive set to add a greeting in the center. And I'm going to use this ring to stamp, but I'm going to cut it out. So a little bit of this will be covered up and then we'll use that ring and then we'll add a greeting in the center. And that's going to be a really beautiful, beautiful card. Okay. So now here's my suggestion. 
if you come up with a wreath like this and you say, oh my gosh, this is my favorite mandala I ever made. I, I want to be able to make it again and again. Save it. Save it. And this is going to become your template for fast wreath building. Okay. Now let me show you how you do fast wreath building. All right. So I'm going to take these two little stamps off here, but we know we're going to use them. So I'm going to load this wreath into my template. Now, this is now my, my template wreath. This is not one that's going to be a card, but I want to mass produce this quickly. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm laying my finished wreath here and I'm going to sit stamps right on top of the images all at once, okay? this one here. You're just going to have to move them a little bit away from each other. Okay, this is the sticky one. This is the reason card makers don't necessarily need to polish their nails. Although I was thinking of getting my nails done because so many of the card makers now have these beautiful nails and mine are just trash. Okay, so we have that, right? Now we need this image. And it's great because you can see right through these stamps and you can line them up perfectly. It's so easy to see through them. You'll be remarkably surprised how you can just line it right up on there. And again, even if they're not perfect, they're going to be perfectly imperfect and it's going to look great. All right. So there I put that there. Now I have this image that I need to get in there. So I'm going to put that one there. It doesn't matter. You can put them on any spot as long as it's the right image that makes sense. And sometimes you have to space them out because they'll overlap. Like I really can't put one there or there. So I'm going to have to put one down here. There's just not enough room because of the little edges that go around the stamp. All right, put that in place. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right, so I have all my stamps now placed. Let me zing in real close so you can see this a little bit better. Can you see what I did now? I put this dot there, this dot there, this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here. I think I might have said that twice, but you get the idea, right? I laid all the stamps on there. Now I'm going to pick them up all at once. Now I have all my stamps ready to go, okay? Now I'm gonna get another piece of cardstock, the same size, and I'm gonna put that into my wreath builder template. I wanna make sure my magnet's not in the way. Now that's gonna look really weird when you start stamping it. You're gonna feel uncomfortable about it. You're gonna be like, nah, I don't like this. But you know it's gonna be, you know it's gonna work, right? You know it's gonna work. So here's one of those times where I like to use a big ink pad because now I have a big stamp, right? This is a big bunch of stamps here and I have more areas to stamp up, to ink up. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to get my Chucky tool because I've got a little more area there, but you can use your hand. All right, so there's my first pass. And you look at that and go, eh, I don't think I like that. All right, now I'm going to turn it to the next position. This is scary when you do this because it doesn't look like anything. Okay, but it, so a few people concerned about, does it matter where you start with this wreath builder? It, um, it does not really matter as much as it does with the smaller one. As long as you're inside, you know, inside the lines. Okay, I'm turning it. It still doesn't look like much. It's just a little terrifying. <laughs> and if you by chance knock a stamp off, don't panic, just clean the stamps and you know, switch out your template and reload it again. You can put the stamp back on. Okay, now you can start to see it's starting to look like something. <laughs> Not much though. So this is only eight times around. 
once you've gone around to all the sides, you're done. You're going to have that full mandala that took us so long to make. That's why I highly encourage you to keep the ones that you like as a template. And then you can keep going. So I'm turning again. Now, I know you guys can do this because I have taught wreath building classes in person. I've had classes of, gosh, I think the biggest class we did all at one time was, oh, man. It was probably 90 people at a pinners conference. And everybody was able to do it. Within like an hour, we made a, we made a wreath together. And so I know that, you know, if people can do it the first time under that kind of pressure, you can do this kind of going back and forth a few times with this video just to get all the, the little fine details. So you can see it's starting to come together. I love it. And it's such, such a pretty wreath. Well, it's a wreath. It's a mandala. Some people call them kaleidoscopes. All right, we're turning it. Almost done. See that? A whole wreath. So what we'll do is when we do our, um, our Christmas one where we do a snowflake mandala, uh, you know, save the mandala, and then you can go back and make them really quickly. There we go. See that? Completely done. Wasn't that fast? And it's exactly the same. Of course, cowboys can do this, Diane. <laughs> cowboys can do anything, okay? <laughs> so you can see it's exactly the same, which is great, because if you're mass producing greetings and they're all gonna be the same size, you wanna make sure that they all fit. So there is the quick uh, tutorial on how to mass produce these. Yummy, don't worry about it. Yummy, cooking with joy. Joy, don't worry. I know you missed, but the, the replay is worth the watch. It really is. All right, so now I'm going to clean up these stamps. So we did five stamps at one time. This is also, doing five stamps at one time like this is also great to do in Versamark ink or embossing ink because once you get the groove, it goes really fast and then you can emboss these in gold or silver, which is stunning. They're absolutely stunning in gold and silver and um, you don't have to worry about the ink drying because you're only going around eight times instead of 40 times, which is what the first one was. We actually went around, was it 40 times? Yeah, eight times five, Tom. Is that 40 still? Yeah, it is. Okay, <laughs> 40 times we went around. And you used black onyx, right? I used black onyx dye ink for this, yes. Now I have another tip to show you in just a minute, but first I wanna show you how I'm gonna color this. And this won't be super boring. I'm just gonna color one of each so you can see how I color one of each little um, element. And then I actually pre-colored one. I know it's so unlike me, but I told Rena I had to do her proud with the uh, with the mandala maker. So she's like, mom, you might want to practice. You might want to just try it first. <laughs> so I did get a little ink on my finished one, but I know you guys will understand. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to color. Let me get another piece of cardstock under here. I don't know why I feel like I need to do that, but I feel like I do. Okay, so I have a few colored pencils here. The colors I have are Kelly Green. Then I have Grass Green. I have Spring Green. I have Aquamarine. I have Light Aqua. I don't know if I'm using all of these or not. Parma Violet. And then Sunburst Yellow. And as always, I will list all of the colors that I use in my description over on YouTube. So even if you watch on Facebook, even if you don't have a YouTube account, you can still go over to YouTube and poke around. Just type in Gina K Designs, my video will come up and you'll be able to see exactly the description in the video. However, if you have an account, you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe. 
<laughs> not that I'm begging, but I am a little. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to color this down here at the bottom like this. Maybe I'll color two of each just so that you can see me color. Ooh, we got music too. This is aquamarine that I'm using here. So you can see I just colored at the bottom of those two. And then I need my Gamsol. So here's a little bit of Gamsol in a cup. And I have a blending stump here. So I'm going to use my blending stump. And if you're new to Gamsol, the biggest problem most people have with Gamsol, they say, oh, I tried to color just like Gina did and I can't get it to work. The, the biggest problem is, can you guys see how dark I laid that color down? I don't know if it's showing really well, but I really pressed and I put some color down. If you just do this kind of thing, like just like color in like real light, that's not gonna do anything with Gamsol. You gotta really press. You gotta do the opposite of what you learned in colored pencil class, because in colored pencil class, they say, use a light touch. Don't really press hard down because you'll burnish it and it'll get all waxy and shiny and it'll be hard to blend. It's exactly what you want it to do when you're using Gamsol. You want it to get all waxy and shiny so that there's something there to break up with the Gamsol. And then go ahead and dip your blending stump in there, but don't just go bloop. Hold it in there for a second and let some of that Gamsol get into the tip of that blending stump. Then the other thing is don't start up here where there's no color and say, why isn't it blending? Get right on the color. You got to break that color down. And then as you go up, you'll start to see the color getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay. I hope that makes sense. That's layering weight? This is layering weight, yes. I happen to think that the Gina K Designs cardstock is absolutely the best cardstock that I have ever, ever, ever used for coloring with pencils and Gamsol. And I've tried other ones that some people really like, and I just, I don't see it. It is just nowhere near the same to me. That's just my opinion. And that is not even, I mean, yes, I love my cardstock, but seriously, that for coloring with Gamsol, it is the smoothest cardstock you will ever, ever um, use. And that's what makes the Gamsol just glide and the wax and everything. All right, now I'm going to use Kelly Green. I'm going to put a little bit right here, just like that. And the, and the reason I like using black onyx dye ink for this, I'm not going to be using any water, so I don't have to worry about it running. I'm not doing watercolor with it. And it dries so fast that, you know, I can like be rubbing all over it and I'm not going to smear the ink, even though I just stamped this. Okay, so now I'm going to use, I'll do this one too. Now I've got three. See, I lied. I said I was only going to do one, but, you know, I got to do a little more because the tips flow out of my mouth. All right, so again, I'm using a different blending stump here just because I don't want to clean the other one. It's kind of wet, and I'm just going to just drag that green down and let it get nice and light as I go down. This, this kind of coloring reminds me of coloring in, you know, the new coloring books that all look like Zentangle and stuff. It's got that same kind of feel. It's so therapeutic and fun. So if you like to do stuff like that, you could just stamp a few of these and then take it with you. Okay, so now we're going to do the, um, I really like this green, grass green. It's a really, really pretty green. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to add just a little dot of it here, a little dot of it here, and a little dot of it here. And then I'm going to add some into these leaves just right there. Add a little bit at the bottom of this leaf, and we'll do these two. And just at the bottom of this leaf. I'm going to use that same blending stump again because green is green and it's not going to have too much of an effect. And I'm just going to work that up. Those little dots. It does give it a very watercolored look.
And you know you need more Gamsol on your blending stump if your cardstock starts to squeak. Like if it feels squeaky, then go ahead and add a little bit more Gamsol in there. You can see it's it's just very um, very soft way to color this. Okay, that's good. I only did two there. Now I'm going to add a little yellow up here at the top of this. And I'm just going to blend it down into the green. That was light touch. Just a little light touch. And then I'm coloring it right down over into the green. And when I color it over into the green, I get a natural fade. Can you see that? I hope that you guys can see that. It just fades. It gets like from yellow to kind of a springy green into that grass green. It just naturally does that. Okay. So now we're going to add a little bit of this. Hmm. Let's, add, let's go back to this bright turquoise here. And let's just color this dot in right there. Color that in. We won't worry about blending there. And then I'm going to use the real light green. This is the spring green just to color these little um, rings around this dot. I want to go with a lighter, brighter green. It's fun to mix the greens. Of course, maybe this is too many greens for you, and that's totally fine. You don't have to do it this way. Okay, now I'm going to use this Parma Violet. This is one of my favorite purples. And I'm going to start just at the top here. Don't these look like little hot air balloons? I feel like you could stamp like a little Christmas ornament top under there and make hot air balloons in the sky if you're building a scene with these. <laughs> See, multi-purpose, the, the mandala maker. I'm skipping. So I'm just doing every other one in purple here. I'll just do those two. And I've got a blending stump here that has some purple on it from another project. And I'm going to blend these down. See how it just moves that color, but it gets nice and light. It really makes you look like, oh, I know exactly how to shade. Because <laughs> you do. You have Gamsol. That's exactly how. All right. There we go. And now I'm going to go in with, um, I think I'll use, I'll try this light aqua here and see how this looks because I pulled it out for a reason. I can't remember what colors I used on my original one. So I'm just coloring in those areas. And I'm going to use that aqua blending stump. We're almost done coloring because I have... Um, I have a colored one, which I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to give you another mandala making tip. It's actually a die cutting tip, can be used for anything, not just mandalas. So stay tuned for that. You know, I love my die cutting tips. And then I'm going to add just a little purple right here. There. And I'll get that purple blending stump again. It's still pretty wet. And I'll just bring that out a little bit. Just so it kind of flows to white. Okay. So you can see how I colored that. And, oh, is Rena here? Somebody said, hi, Rena. <laughs> Let's see if she's here. She might be. She might be on a break at school. Hey, Rena, if you're here. Oh, it's 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 another Rena. Well, hello, Rena. It's nice to see you too. <laughs> no, I think she can't get away at school. She must be doing somebody's hair. Okay. So now here is a finished colored one. So that's what it looks like, completely colored. Okay. So now you can see, because I didn't exactly copy this one from this one, this opening might be a hair bigger than this one, but they're close and you know, you can mimic it. So again, very easy to do multiples. So now what I wanna do is I want to 
I want to stamp a greeting, okay? So I wanna use one of these to stamp on. I wanna stamp the greeting with one of these, but I want to stamp this and die cut it out perfectly. And I struggle with perfectly centered die cutting. You guys know I do, and I have lots of cheats for that. So I'm gonna show you another cheat especially when you're using like a big frame that you might want to stamp more than once. All right. So I have my die cutting machine and I have to decide what die I want to use to cut this out. Now we made sure that this would work with master layouts three. So you can cut this out with Master Layouts 3 and get the little stitched edge around the outside. And then if you want, you can do a solid layer. Now this will cover up those dots. So maybe you don't want to do the solid layer. Maybe you want to do a really small one. Um, but I do want to show you how to do this. So we'll do two different circles here and then you guys can decide which one you like better, okay? So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, I'm going to cut this out of a piece of peach cardstock. Okay. So I'm making a hole basically is what I'm going to do. You're going to like this tip, I think. Maybe you've seen it before, but if not, just humor me. Now I'm going to save that for another card project. And I'm just going to trim some of the excess around this just off to the side here, okay, like that. So I have a little template, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a white piece using the same die. I'm going to cut a couple of them because I've got a couple mandalas here and I might want to do this a couple times. So there's one. I want to see how this looks. I think it's going to look pretty cool in the center there. Of course, I have, I've dressed this up a little bit more. So I could do, you know, a smaller one. But I want to do this just because I want to show you this tip. And I think it's a cool tip. So, so humor me here. Let's cut one more out. Just so you can really get the feel of why this is fast. And this is a tip that you can use for any card making, not just this mandala maker, but you can do this for any of your holiday cards or anytime you're mass producing something and you want it to be perfect. So I cut a couple of them here. I'm going to put the other one. There it is. Okay. And then I'm going to cut one black one out of the matching plain one from the Master Layouts 3 die set. I just find a piece of black cardstock in my scrap box here. Here we go. Cut this out. I know my plates are a mess, but you know, if your stuff isn't a mess, you're probably not using it. <laughs> so if your plates don't look like mine, you're not die cutting enough. Let's get on it. All right, and you can see that those line up really nicely together. And that does really create some pop when you put it in the center there. Okay. So now, here is my little tip. Let me get this out of the way. We're going to use it again because I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm going to do something different. But I'm going to take a little piece of cardstock here, and I'm going to stamp my greeting. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to stamp... <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this. Okay. So I'm going to remove my mandala maker here, my wreath builder, my mandala maker. It could be the mandala maker. Tonight it made a mandala, so tonight it gets that name. Okay. I'm going to use this side tonight for this. Okay. So I'm going to stamp this on here. I have to think sometimes because I don't always know what I'm doing. 
like you guys don't know that by now, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stamp this ring from the Mandala Maker 2. Get some good pressure on it. I love this ring. Okay, so there we have it, okay? Now, we know that that's where it is situated on the door of the Misty. So we're gonna leave it on the door of the Misty. Now, what we're gonna do is, I like to tape it down so it doesn't go anywhere. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to put this right here like this, okay? Could probably use a smaller one, but I'm not gonna recut all those because this is my technique. I'm not even gonna use this one actually. So you can get it perfectly centered there how you want it, and then just tape this down on top of it. This is now your template. Now you're just gonna drop this die cut piece in there and you're gonna stamp it again. And now we have it perfectly centered. See how easy that is? All right. I know I have to do that knockoff video. I am planning on doing that. So many things came up and I just haven't gotten to it yet. But I promise I will let you know when I'm doing it. All right, you can see I dropped another one in. Just wanna make sure that it's down in there. Get in there, there we go. <laughs> Stay. There's another one. So you can see, you can mass produce these things and get them perfectly centered so you don't have to, you know, freak out trying to die cut it. Because if it shifts a little bit and it's a little bit off, I'm telling you, it's the most frustrating thing when it comes to frames. Frames, you really kind of want them to be centered. So that's my little die cutting tip for tonight. And then you can just keep that and anytime, well, not, you have to re-stamp it but you can keep this opening with your dies if you want, but you have to re-stamp this because you have to know where that stamp is going to be on the door of the Misty. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp, um, you make me a better person. Because it's true, all of you do. You make me a better person. I love you. All right, and I'm going to stamp this with my block. And you might think, well, you're crazy. How are you going to get it straight? But it's a circle, so it doesn't have to be straight because it's a circle, and you can turn a circle until it's straight. So I'm going to stamp that. I just have to have it centered. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Okay? And then I would pop that on there and then pop that onto my card and you can see how that would create a really pretty element for the center of that mandala. Um, I'm not sure if I like that 100% or if I want to go smaller. I feel like I want to go smaller. And we do have a smaller one. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, we have this one that's from Master Layouts 3. So we could go a little smaller, but it's still gonna cut that off. But you'll see a little bit of it peeking out. So let's do that. This one I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a frame for, so I'm not gonna use a frame. I'm just gonna stamp it. Probably didn't leave myself enough room to cut it out, did I? Oh yeah, I did. I just did. Okay. So we're gonna cut that out. And then we're going to quick turn this into a card and then we're going to give it away. So Tom, you've got some work to do. I'm on it. You're on it? Okay. So let me get this one more time. And we'll cut these out. I love the greetings in this incentive set. The incentive set is called It's All You. And they're all words, little phrases that talk about you. And um, 
it's yours free with any $75 purchase. So if you get the kit, and there's a couple other things you want to put in your cart, little things. Maybe you need to stock up on some Connect glue or some tape or you need some envelopes, things like that. Because we got to get these cards sent out, right? Um, you'll get that free. It automatically ships with your qualifying purchase. So I'm just going to cut the coordinating die out with Master Layouts 3. Because I want this to be smaller. I still want the little black pop behind there. I have to finish this card because I have to give it to somebody. Okay, so there's my little greeting now. I do like the one with the frame though, but it just takes away so much of the coloring work that I did. And you can combat that next time when you want to use the bigger one by just moving the images out closer to the edge. That's all. Just go closer to the edge. That'll make your center bigger. The closer your images are to the edge, the bigger the center. The more you bring them in, the smaller the opening in the center. That makes sense, right? Okay, so I'm gonna cut a black layer here. And then I have to pick a card base color. So what color card base do you guys think? So this is a five and a quarter inch, so I'm gonna go up to five and three eighths. I'm going to turn it and do five and three eighths again. You guys have to tell me what you think about card base colors for this. Ocean Mist, Aqua. Okay, Ocean Mist, yep, Aqua. Any kind of Aqua. So that seems to be the color, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to tape this together. And I'm definitely going to add some sequins to this because that's the other thing that looks so cool on these mandalas is to add sequins going all the way around. Okay. All right. So should I try uh, sea glass, you think? Sea glass might look good with that color. What do you think? That really looks pretty with that blue. So let me use that because sea glass, everybody was kind of saying aqua. We'll go with that. Um, if you don't have the large scoreboard, you can still score large pieces of cardstock. So we're going to score this at five and a half inches down about midway. And then we're going to flip it and score it at five and a half inches again. That will make a big five by eight and a half piece of cardstock, card base. And then we're just going to trim it to five and a half inches. And then I can use those other pieces for layering pieces and die cuts later. So we'll cut this to five and a quarter, no, five and a half, five and a half. Don't fail me now. I'm going to cut it to five and a half right here, and then I'm going to flip it over. I didn't cut it right to five and a half, but my edge is a little uneven, so that just evened it up. And this is plenty to cut out circles and other things. Okay, so that is going to go right onto my card base. You don't see a whole lot of it because it's a really big wreath, but you'll see it when you open it up. It's got a, almost like a one-eighth of an inch border around it, just like the rest of the card, but I like it. We could have trimmed it down too once we were done if we wanted it smaller. But I kind of like the big, big boldness of it. So let's pop up the center piece with a couple foam squares. Layer these together. And we'll use a couple of black foam squares because you don't see the black on the black cardstock as much. So we'll do three of those. And then we definitely have to add some sequins. Okay. Will that card need extra postage? It will. It definitely will. Anytime you go to like a five by seven or a six by six, it needs extra postage. I'm glad we did the smaller one though, because you can see the cute little green beans going around. I like that. 
Okay, let's add a little bit of sequin action here. So I have these sequins. These are our new lemonade sequins. And no, I'm not going to use the pink and the yellow, but I am going to use these whitish ones. I think they're really pretty. And we can pick spots to put sequins. We can put them anywhere we want. So we could do, you know, we could do one there and one there, there, and there, there. Is my head in the way? I'm sorry. I'm just putting little dots going around. I like to put my glue down and give it a minute to set. It's kind of nice because the sequin will grab really easily right off of the, uh, the jewel picker then. There we go. So we're gonna use several sequins on this card. And we'll just pop them right into place real quick, real quickly. These are really pretty. They're very opaly. All right, so while I'm attaching these, Tom, I think we need to pick a winner. I don't even know what time it is. Is it late? Did uh, I go over? One minute over. Oh, that's not bad. So and you can see. We do have a winner. We do? Ooh, it's exciting. So you can see, I'm just interrupting here for a second. You can see how these are just kind of dropping off of the jewel picker a little bit. Of course, I say that, and now it's sticking, but. And it's because that glue has had a little bit of chance, little bit of a chance to set. And so it's more tacky, it's more grabby. I'm almost done this. And then I can show off the card while you're announcing the winner, Tom. Is my head like right in the way? No, really you're is. fine. <laughs> All right, the winner of the You Make Me a Better Person Mandala card of tonight's show is Donna L. Cozell. Woo, Donna! But they're nice because they're just light colored. And so they don't really take away from the mandala itself, but they just add that little bit of sparkle, which is kind of hard to see on the screen, but you get the idea. Congratulations, Donna. Donna is a longtime viewer. I recognize her name from Facebook and from our lives. She comes a lot. So congratulations, Donna. Donna, what you have to do is just send your address, your full name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and uh, tell them you won the mandala card and I will send this right out to you. All right. Well, there was some mandala tips and tricks tonight for making a fun little mandala card. You can make these into snowflakes, into all kinds of things. You can continue the pattern so it goes completely off the card. And that makes a really cool background. I'm sure some of you have seen Jennifer McGuire's video and she did that in her video. So there you go. There's tonight's finished card. All right, you guys. Well, this was so much fun. I want to thank you all so much for being with us. We will be back on Wednesday for a Wednesday noon lunchtime live. It's noon central time. So once you see it posted, it should adjust as long as your computer clock is right. It should adjust to your time zone. All right, you guys. Well, stay cool, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.